prophetess Leslie Osai.
I need thee every hour. She was a homemaker. She was at home taking care of her three kids and her husband. She was cleaning her piano, dusting it off. And a sweet sound came inside of her. And the Holy Spirit whispered to her, unto her, I need the I need the
place that secret place that you once had that you lost today we revive it we break loose you will enter into dimensions where you will feel like it's just you and God again there was a hymn writer in the midst of crisis his whole family died on a ship and he began to sing a song and he said it is well it is well my come on we release you we release you from the grips of the enemy that does not want you to commune with God let the gates be open today
riches became a man of wisdom because he began to be broken hearted. He was contrite. He was trusted with a nation and he went back to his maker and said that I cannot do this on my own. In a place of brokenness, there is safety. There is lifting. There is help. So if you don't learn how to be broken when it comes to the things of God, if you don't learn how to be grateful, Solomon could have asked for anything in this world, but he confessed his ignorance. Father, I don't know how to be a mother. I don't know how to be a wife. I don't know how to be a daughter. I don't know how to live this life on my own. brokenness our generation is losing that we are no longer broken this week make sure you listen to only hymns forget about the people that have come out now go back to the hymns that were birthed out of the spirit and understand what God is saying We are losing our brokenness as a generation. We don't tremble when God moves anymore. We just come to testify. Do you know how hard it is to be chosen as a wife? For someone to say yes to you. But it's coming a million, a dozen in this house. We should tremble at these testimonies. Do you know people who have been praying for years for children? But in this house, the minute you get married, you get pregnant. We should tremble at these things. Churches closed down. Not because the old people were dying. The young people were dying of COVID. To the glory of God, everyone here is present. Let us not lose our brokenness. Yesterday I was talking to a young lady and she said that she, in a dream she heard God clearly and God said to her go to KFT for they have captured the sound of heaven for this generation and when I was on the plane I began to pray Lord what does this mean and he said you and your husband understand brokenness when someone wants to inquire why you guys are doing so well begin to explain to them that your brokenness supersedes your prayers our generation must be more broken we cannot be so unimpressed by what God is doing Everything should make you say wow. Everything should make you thrust yourself on the floor. Forget the makeup, the suits. If you are to understand that the hand of God has visited you all these years, even in your disobedience, even in your offense, even when we thought you didn't deserve it, So as she was cleaning her piano, she began to sing again. I need thee. Oh, I need Come on, confess to your maker. You can't do this without me. Confess it all. 
it's not a matter of tongue speaking begin to confess to him I cannot do this on my own and Abednego he's the answer to the insults of men he's the rose of Sharon he's the lily of the, ba the valley the bright and morning star he is the fleece of Gideon he is the ram that was in the thicket he is the provider Elohim Adonai El Gibor Jehovah Jireh El Nisi come on praise your maker Worship him, worship him, worship him. Oh, 
today. We just wanted to take some time out to let you know that we still tremble at your testimonies. We still enjoy your presence. That in this church we are broken and broken for you. We ask that you continuously reside with us. We confess our ignorance today. We don't know how to do it. We cannot live this life. We are people leading people and we need you more than ever. Abba Father, just as Solomon, he did not have anything to ask but your wisdom, which is another translation for your presence. Today we ask that your presence dwells with us. Dwell among us. Dwell among us. We ask that today's word pierce through the soul and divides. He asks that today you speak to us in a special way. We thank you, Abba Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 If we don't teach you the things of old, please lower it. You will forget it. The reason why God said that we've captured the sound of heaven because we understand the balance that is needed. That the songs of old still need to be sung. Listen, I never want us to place more emphasis on impartation and oil and all these things and let you forget the secret place and have you forget that intimacy without God is useless. You can pray for power, riches, money, wives, husbands. You can do all these things. But if you're not intimate with Christ, you will lose it. Don't lose your intimacy. Don't lose your closeness with Christ. May a desire begin to stir up inside of you. That even when you're sitting there, this song will begin to ring in your spirit. I need thee. The lady was not in sorrow. There was nothing wrong with her. She was simply cleaning, a nice homemaker, cleaning. And the Holy Spirit whispered to her. Not knowing that many years later, when she loses her husband, she would understand the song. If you don't get to know God in the good seasons. When the enemy comes at you like a flood. That is when the suicidal thoughts happen. That is when you want to go and kill yourself. You want mental health, I'm telling you now. Get close with him now that things are not as bad. Because this life. One thing that is guaranteed are the seasons of life. And so every day you are preparing in faith that even when the flood comes, it will not consume you. Don't lose your brokenness. Do not lose your brokenness. This has nothing to do with nothing, but everything to do with everything. The Spirit of God is saying that you guys have lost your brokenness. You have lost your intimacy. This church is a prayer church. We do deliverance. We do all types of stuff. But do not forget that you at home, by yourself, in your car, in the shower, you have a responsibility. You cannot acknowledge that Apostle and I are successful without knowing what we do. The secret place is important for us. Don't lose your intimacy. You should always feel the wind and know that God is there, not just that it's cold. When the birds chirp, you should hear the promises of God, not just birds chirping. Lack of intimacy is what makes you lose your character. 
Some of you, the bitterness, the disrespect that you are walking in, the highly offendedness that you are walking in, it is because you have lost your intimacy. When you are intimate, you don't lose character easily. Abba Father, I ask that you use me today in a special way. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 As we see, our Papa is in the DMV. He's on his apostolic tour. Our Bishop elect. And so we pray for more grace. We celebrate him. Celebrate the giant of God. When you read the book of Galatians, it first starts out to say that no man called Paul, but it was God who called him. And when I read that every time, I remember this man. That no matter what anyone thinks, me as his wife, who knows what he does in the secret place, I can guarantee you that he was called by God. Please celebrate the bishop elect. And celebrate yourselves as well too. Please be seated in heavenly places. Someone says, I always start off my sermons by saying, I won't stand before you long. But today, I will not stand before you long. The Lord gave me a word and he said that this word, he wants me to begin everywhere I go, the different places that I will be ministering at. Even if it's a piece of that word, he wants to make sure that this word is something that I am giving out as he has given to me. And so today in my prayer, my prayer room, I began to ask the Lord, that will you withhold blessings if we are not ready? It was a random question that I just asked in my prayer time with God this morning. I said, God, would you be willing to withhold some blessings from me, my husband, the church, from family members, if a vessel is not ready? And his answer was yes. He said, I will withhold the rain until there is a vessel to hold it. And so today I want to briefly speak to you about vessels that hold revival rain. Yeah. Psalm 72, verse 6. Psalm 72, verse 6. He shall come down like rain upon the grass before mowing like showers that water the earth. Amen. He likens us many times and his glory to rain. Anytime he wants to release his glory, you hear and you begin to hear the sound of an abundance of what? Rain. You see, personal revival before territorial revival. Many of us want to take over nations. We want our children to take over nations. We want our marriages to take over nations. We want to own a bunch of things. We want to do everything. But like I said, your personal intimacy with Christ, your personal revival, your personal territorial takeover supersedes the national one. God is not a waster. He's a good businessman. And he does not pour out anything that he cannot invest in. And so many of us are sitting there wondering why the increments come so small. Or why they're not coming at all. That's because he does not have a vessel yet that is fully secured to hold the rain. Today as I minister unto you. May you become whole, and as he pours out, may you be able to hold every blessing. 
You see, the, the issue that we're having in this generation, not just this church, is that there's so many people crying out for blessings, and then two years later, they're divorced because they could not hold it. I'm hearing more and more stories about people who get married and then all of a sudden they, they just scatter. Why? Because they were never ready. Before you can have a national revival, you must make sure your personal territory has been taken care of. That doesn't mean that all your family will be in Christ, but it does guarantee that you have given them all the Christ that you know. You have planted every type of seed. That means you are intentionally praying for them at all times. You are taking care. That's why the Bible says that even those who desire the, the office of a bishop, make sure you've taken care of your home before. Personal revival supersedes territorial takeovers. You want to take off, but your family, your nuclear family, you yourself, you have not yet conquered some demons, but you want the business to expand. So you want God to give you a million dollars but you cannot even be loyal with the hundred that he's given to you. There's a disconnect here. I want us to turn to 2 Chronicles 7, 13 to 14, a scripture that we all know. 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 13. When I shut up heaven and there is no rain, or command the locusts to devour the land, or send pestilence among my people. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Amen. The power of brokenness. There that word goes again, brokenness. Until you are broken, you will never ever be able to escape the pestilence. Until you get to a place where you yourself, you have gotten it together and you can now be trusted with more people. You will always be jealous that someone else is carrying more influence than you. Until you get to a place where your posture, he said, though you are called by my name, though you are a Christian, you still got to humble yourself. So being a Christian does not automatically mean that humility comes. So many of us are so prideful now thinking that we are better than someone who is in the street smoking and drinking. But we are worse off because you know better, but you're not doing better. Those who are called by my name, he's not even talking about the Gentiles. He said, those who are called by my name, those who are in church, those who know how to speak in tongues, those who know how to pray strategic warfare prayers, those who come to fire night, those who are on the midday and midnight prayer lines, you. He said, if you would humble yourself and pray, and then he can do something. I told you brokenness. Solomon was so wise even before he knew that he was getting wisdom. He realized that the key to this thing is for me to confess my brokenness to God. Confess my ignorance to God. Many of you are so pompous nowadays. You've arrived. You do what you want. You got the money now. You got the house, the car, the kids. You are grown. But little do we realize that the Spirit of God has nothing to do with age. I know people who are 80 years 
And they are emailing us saying that the kind of things that we are teaching here, they've never heard it in all their 80 years and they've been Christians. If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves. Isaiah 57, 15. Isaiah 57, verse 15. For thus says the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him who has a contrite and humble spirit mm. to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. Amen. His residence is with the humble. If you want the presence of God, go to a humble person. Their atmosphere alone tells you that Christ is with them, that the Holy Ghost reigns in them. If you are wondering why sometimes you feel so lonely and you too testify like everyone else, I'm in the midst of people but I feel so lonely all the time. It is pride. Moving forward, do away with the I'm shy. Who in the Bible was shy? That is a form of pride that some of you cover things up with. And me, I don't, I don't, like, I don't like to bother people. The devil is a liar. That's your pride. That is your pride at work. If he said do not forsake the gathering, coming together, what makes you think isolating yourself is wisdom? Do away with that nonsense. You are not shy. You are prideful. Go to God in prayer like Solomon. Confess your ignorance. God, all these years, I've not been a people person. Give me grace. Give me grace. Because we cannot forsake the equation of man on this earth and think that the hand of God would visit us. Some of us are praying. We're praying. But your answer is in a vessel. But because of pride. He said the contrite heart, that is where I am close to. Not the depressed heart. He said the contrite heart. There's a difference between depression, that is isolating yourself outside the presence of God, and being contrite is lowering your spirit to hear from God in the presence and in the atmosphere of God. So many of us think that humility is those who are quiet and bend on their knees and say thank you and God bless you when some of you are the most prideful people. Humility is not a matter of sound. It comes from the heart. And so this scripture here, he's saying that, listen, the only place you can find me when you're looking for me, I reside with those who are brokenhearted. I reside with those people who when they come to church, when the preaching is going on, they're not thinking about their aunt and their sister and their ministry member who did this, but they are allowing the word to renew them. Those are the worst types of people who always think that someone is talking about someone, but it's you we're talking about. Humble yourself. So many of your blessings have left because of lack of humility. Lack of humility stems from lack of the secret place. Exodus 2.23. Exodus 2.23. Now it happened in the process of time that the king of Egypt died. Then the children of Israel groaned because of the bondage, and they cried out, and their cry came up to God because of the bondage. Their cry. When you are crying, you are in your most humble state. To get the expedient hand of God, you must be able to be broken. Some of you will need this. You know, when you hear a word, you don't know that it associates with you until you are in a situation. Today, the Holy Ghost is tapping you on your shoulder. Some of you need to cry out for mercy more than anything. Some, some of us, even our prayer lives, even when you know you don't deserve it, you are still commanding things. 
Instead of getting to a place of saying that, Lord, I don't, I don't deserve this. I need divine mercy to come upon me. I always tell people that I am still stuck at the fact that someone knelt to ask me for my hand in marriage. I've not gotten to the proposal part. I've not reached the marriage in my mind yet. I've not reached the fact that I even have one child yet. I'm still at the fact that me, a wretch like me, out of all the women out there, that God would choose me for such an assignment. If you don't learn how to tremble at everything God gives to you, if you don't learn how to be grateful, you have to understand the weight of your responsibility on your head. Do you understand that there are dimensions that people will never ever be able to experience until you sacrifice yourself? Until David lifted up and went to the place of war to sacrifice himself. Goliath was still tormenting people. So they would have never known God as the defender without a man sacrificing himself. So unless you begin to sacrifice yourself and say that, Lord, for the sake of my family, I'm laying down this plate. For the sake of my family, I'm seeking after you. For generations' sake, some people will not experience revival unless you decide to do better. He will withhold the rain. And so there are so many people in your house, so many of your aunts and uncles, your mothers and fathers that died prematurely, all because you were not sacrificial enough. All God needed was your brokenness to probably extend their years about 10 more years. If you don't sacrifice yourself, if you don't lay it all at the altar, some people will not experience some things. As a mother, if you don't learn how to sacrifice your sleep early, if you don't learn how to sacrifice your food early, your kids will have to wait till they're 30 and 40 to finally figure out who the Holy Spirit is. As a father, if you don't stop sleeping so much, even in your youth when you don't have kids, a time will come where you will be crying out to God, Lord, send someone to marry this daughter of mine. Many of us are delayed not because of us, but because our parents did not sacrifice themselves. Unless we learn how to sacrifice ourselves, even our children will not experience dimensions of Christ that they should. Can you imagine getting to the pearly gate and God saying that I entrusted a nation to you, but all you did was care about yourself. Your prayer life sounded like, give me a house, give me a job, give me, give me, give me, give me. This is how my mind thinks. When I'm doing wrong, I'm always thinking, when I get to the gates, what will he say about this exact moment? It gets me together. Vessels that hold rain. There are certain environments on earth that will never experience God unless you sacrifice yourself. Some of you live in in villages, in the Caribbean, in, in Africa, in Europe, you live in communities that no church would ever come and dwell. You are the only church. But you're not sacrificing yourself for God to really get you together. So that the very least, in the midst of the projects where shootings are going on, you are bold enough to begin to hand out tracts to the thugs out there, to those who are selling drugs and saying, Jesus loves you. Because of you, many people will not experience God. And that should be a burden that makes you cry. That should be something that burdens your soul. 
that if I don't speak, somebody won't hear Jesus. And what that looks like is seeing someone about to jump off a highway and not telling them that it's wrong. And so every time you are a Christian and you see someone out of bounds doing the wrong thing and you just sit there, just remember you are watching someone jump off a highway. Vessels that hold rain. Genesis 2, 4 to 7. Genesis 2, verse 4. This is the history of the heavens and the earth when they were created. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Before any plant of the field was in the earth, and before any herb of the field had grown. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain on the earth, and there was no man to till the ground. He had not caused it to rain on the earth because there was no one to take care of the ground. Do you understand the revelation there? Because you were not there, he could not release the rain. So God might want to bless a community, but because you are not ready, because you are selfish, because you still have one foot in and one foot out, because you lack sacrifice, he cannot forego rain. See, there's a decision that many religious people make that God is stingy and that he does not want to do this and that. But God wants the move of God more than we do. He wants to show himself off. He wants to be magnified. You don't think if God had it his way every day we would be just worshiping. Thanking him for the testimonies. But some of you have become your own stumbling block. It's easier for us to tell you that a house witch did it. But in reality, it is your lack of sacrifice. It's your inability to get on your knees. Then you wonder why you end up having knee issues. You are not using it for the right thing anyway. There are rains that are withheld because there's no man to till the ground. God wants to see his move more than we do. He wants to see rain. He wants to see revival. He wants to see people aligned. Yet, no matter how much preaching goes on, this generation especially, I would have thought that we would have learned from the generations that have passed that they did not get it right all the way. That's why we still had to pray certain prayers. So if we don't get it right now, that means the following generation. He's looking for a vessel that will speak up in government. Tell them that the clowns or the drag queens, because that's what it is, cannot be reading to children. He's waiting for a vessel so that he can speak through. In your occultic home, where they don't serve anything Jesus, he's waiting for you to be more in tune with him so he can empower you to speak and heaven will back you. But because you are just a church goer and not an intimate member of the Christian society, it is only you that is being saved at this time. I'm trying to place a burden on you. You may not hear it now, but when you go home, my voice will ring in your heart because God is calling you to come up hither. It is not enough for us to be experiencing certain things when God is waiting on you. Yes, he can use someone else, but in the plan of God, he already said that I ordained this task for this person. And so let me give him or her just a little while longer. It's 
vessels that hold rain. Luke 23, 28. Luke 23, 28. But Jesus, turning to them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. Amen. He said, don't cry for me. Listen, Jesus was one of the most cheekiest people. He'll give you a cheeky answer in a, in a quick hurry. He said, don't cry for me. Don't be too worried and too busy. Cry for yourself. Cry for the fact that your family is still not saved. Cry for the fact that people in your household, when they reach 30 years of age, they have knee issues. Cry for the fact that they're still bearing this. Cry for the fact that one pregnancy of yours causes so much trials and tribulation. Cry for that. That's what he was saying. Cry for the fact that you have been in church. You call yourself a Christian for years now. Yet we have seen no fruit from you. He said, cry for yourself. Some of you get mad when pastors get gully on you. But let me tell you, Jesus was the most gully. He will tell you off about yourself and pray for you all at the same time. He said, cry for yourselves. Do your own self a favor. Figure out why you can't pass the classes yet. But you call yourself a Christian proudly. Vessels that hold rain. See, Moses, God, God kept him until they cried out. All these years, he was there. Of course, he was being prepared. But until they cried out, a deliverer was not sent. When they began to cry out, that is when he was released. And so many of you have cried out, Lord, I need a more intimate relationship with Christ. I need more godly friends. And he decided to plant two deadly committed people and create a church that should extend across the globe for your sake. That's how much God loves you. He heard your cry. You think it was just going to drop out of heaven. He said, no, let me pull, put you in the school of the spirit. Have you come and sit at KFT. Learn how to humble yourself. Learn the genesis to the revelation. And then I will release my reign. Until they cried, Moses. Moses was now. Genesis 38, 9. Genesis 38, verse 9. But Onan knew that the heir would not be his. And it came to pass, when he went in to his brother's wife, that he emitted on the ground, lest he should give an heir to his brother. Amen. Entrusted with a generation, and he threw it all away. That is the equivalent of some of us. God is entrusting us, but because it's not for me, that's the Onan syndrome. If it's not my name on it, I don't support it. That's not kingdom. If it does not have me on the flyer, I won't support it. If it's not my voice, I won't support it. And God is saying, you see, this is why you are still not a vessel that can hold my reign. Puts you through many tests. And you still haven't passed it. I know a man. Every November to about February, he ends up on the couch of someone. For years now, November to February, he always has nowhere to sleep and ends up on someone's couch. And one day he was telling us his story. And the Holy Spirit said, because he never passed the test. Every time I try to advance him, his attitude will keep him on that couch. He will go get a place, everything will be fine, and then he'll fail the test and he'll go back. This is a vessel that cannot hold rain. Imagine God trying to bless you, but because you decide that you are not ready, he has to forego your blessings. And so now you're praying amiss. Fire, fire, fire. Meanwhile, you should fire yourself. 
vessels that hold rain. You see, God is a businessman. He invests properly. This is why the story of the talents, when you read it, he did not care about the man who only gave one talent back to him. The goal was for you to go and multiply the talents. When I come back, let me see what you've done with it so that I can entrust you with more. God is a good businessman. And if you do not get yourself to a place where you can be invested in, every day he will bypass you. And this is where envy and bitterness come in. Why is everyone getting a promotion? Why is everyone doing this? Why is this happening to people? And yet you are sitting there because you cannot yet be trusted. Some people, God knows he can't trust you with a child because you will end up sleeping on your child. You sleep so much. You sleep till thy kingdom come. Let a parade pass by, you still sleeping. And you want him to entrust a reward and a gift to you? Oh no, it does not work that way. Mary and the alabaster box, she was serving to the level that which she said, God, you are worthy of everything. Let me break everything I have. That is the makings of a vessel. When you get to that point where you can genuinely say, my children belong to you, my marriage belong to you, everything I have belongs to you, I'm willing to even give it up if you tell me to, then you are ready. And those who say, all die be die, they never die. Those who say that for the sake of God, I'm willing to give it all up. If I die, if I perish, I perish. They will never perish. But until you get to a point where you can genuinely give it all to God and always second guessing and always thinking someone is manipulating you by telling you to surrender it all, you can never be used. And because of you, I'm placing the blame on you today. There's a burden that needs to be placed on you today. That when you don't get it together, it's not about you. It's about everyone around you. If you win, everyone wins. If you lose, everyone loses. When you decide to be one foot in and one foot out, all you are doing is making the enemy gain access to your family. You are coming here, you're smoking, you're still having sex, and you think that your, your marriage will be preserved? You are still masturbating, talking about a spirit comes over me, and you think God will preserve you? And your prayer life does not even match that Lord show me mercy? Isaiah 5. Three to four. Isaiah 5 verse 3. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge please between me and my vineyard. What more could have been done to my vineyard that I have not done in it? Why then, when I expected it to bring forth good grapes, did it bring forth wild grapes? He said, I tilled the land. I prepared the land. I did everything that I had to do. You see, God is a wounded lover. All your life, he's been preparing you. He's always trying to make excuses for you, even when we know you don't deserve it. He said, I've prepared the land. I've done everything that I had to do. Why is this yard not bearing fruit? He said, I've done all these things for you. Why are you not bearing fruit? He's a wounded lover because even though we play him, some way, somehow, when you continue reading, he put a wine press in the middle of the grape yard because he had expectation. He said, this one, I've invested so much in her. I've put mentors her way. I've visited her. I've done everything that I had to do. Why is she not bearing fruit? He said, I've tilled the land. I've done everything. When I expected it to bring forth grapes, did it? No. All this time, he said, I've prepared.
hired you. I've done so much for you. And yet and still, you come to church and you are sleeping. Continue reading. Verse 5. And now, please let me tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away its hedge and it shall be burned and break down its wall and it shall be trampled down. I will lay it waste. It shall not be pruned or dug, but there shall come up briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain on it. For the vineyard of the Lord... It's okay. He said, I've done so much for you. I've invested so much for you. I've given you chance after chance after chance after chance. And because I'm a merciful God, I continue to do it. But you guys have to realize that there are dimensions of God that you will never experience. And this is it. He said that I'm going to leave it alone, but there will be no rain. So as for her, she'll come to church every Sunday. As for him, he'll be okay. But never will he have a testimony. Never will he advance. He will just be a day-to-day -day Christian because guess what? You will not continue to waste my investments. This is God. Do you understand why he cursed the fig tree? Because Jesus is the creator of seasons. When he comes on the scene and he speaks, you must begin to bear fruit. And so there's no such time as wasted time when Jesus begins to speak. And when Jesus spoke and the fig tree decided not to bear fruit, he cursed it. When you decide not to bear fruit, he's not a God that will curse you, but he'll make sure he withholds the rain. And so for you, you think it's okay to just be a casual Christian, but we see no growth in character. You are still offended because you don't, you lack the secret place. So he said, I'm going to withhold from you. And one thing I've learned in leadership, every time, and this is not to scare anybody, but I'll let you know. Anytime people begin to flex on the work of God, I don't want to do it no more, I'm offended, I'm this, I'm that. They always end up jobless. Something bad happens. Like God will humble you. Do you understand? You will get humbled quickly. This is why people think pastors are the ones who curse them. It's a principle. What you sow is what you reap. So you want to sow a bunch of offense and discord? God will make sure you reap just that. This is a message that you should, I want to place a burden because I'm carrying the burden. And I told God that I don't like it. It makes me uncomfortable. You see, I can't even be jolly with you guys. Because I'm here to place the burden back on you. When you are sitting there idle, you should be saying that, Lord, how am I advancing? Give me something. Speak to me. Where can I go and read? How can I serve? What can I do? God cursed that. Jesus cursed that fig tree. Because it didn't bear fruit. Jesus is the creator of times and seasons. Every time he steps on the scene, you must begin to bear fruit. Every time you hear the word of God, it must begin to cut, divide. It must begin to make you think like, wow, I need to go back to this secret place that this girl is talking about. Having sex one minute, coming to church, telling us, and then not repenting. You think you are doing me? I'm doing my job. I'm, I'm giving you the word of God. You are the one who will suffer. And the scriptures prove it. God is a wounded lover. He, he's invested so much into us. Yet he's getting no results. So the frustration is happening. I pray that the Lord does not get frustrated with you and your situation. I pray for the sake of this message, he allows you another opportunity to make it right. I pray that a deep burden is placed on you. That even the worship songs that you sing are not just something to keep noise. 
in your car but you begin to listen to the words and you begin to confess it and your heart begins to cry out that Lord I'm not in this life just for myself I need to do more there has to be more than just me 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 all the time you are called for more than just you this world is too big to think that only two people are needed the Lord is in need of you. That's why he will untie you. Please be seated. See, it would be a shame for you to just be here writing and no change. Verse 6. Isaiah 5, verse 6. I will lay it waste. It shall not be pruned or dug, but there shall come up briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain on it. Amen. I pray that the opposite of this happens to you. I pray that God would not allow people to give up on you. That people will always come your way to tap you on the shoulder, to cultivate you to make sure that you are doing the right thing. I pray that you have people around you who are not yes men all the time, but people who will genuinely let you know that you have strayed away, you have drifted. Come back to the secret place. Because woe unto those people who have no one to tell them that you are entering wasteland. Woe unto you if you don't get convicting messages that let you know that I am not on the right path. And some of you might be saying, well, I do pray. Your 30 minutes of prayer that you've been praying since you were a day one Christian. You are in year seven, year 15, year 22, and you are still praying 30 minutes. I pray the opposite of this happens. I pray that God gives you people who will be attentive to your, 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 your vineyard. People who are intentionally called for you and your assignment. People who are called to convict you. People who are called to make sure that you are in church, that you are on the prayer line, that you are praying. A spouse, a friend, a sister, a brother. Someone who will say, I will not allow you to be wasteland. Please be seated. See, the reason the Lord restrains the rain from coming is because people are not prepared. And the issue is that when you give glory when you give blessings to unprepared land the issue is blessings are like fertilizers and so let's say we have the vineyard here now if he withholds the rain or if he does not withhold the rain and he allows the rain to come down the rain being a fertilizer to the grass that is there it begins to let the grass the flowers grow but because the land is not tilled, all the thorns and thistles and weeds begin to grow with it. And so now you have the blessing and the bad character. You have the blessing and now you cannot hold it. You have the blessing, but you are still prideful. You have the child now, but you still have the poor nature. You have the husband now, but you still don't know how to speak. Because this is why he has to withhold the rain. So even in his anger, he still cares for you. Because if he was to release goodness onto you now, Yes, the flowers will bloom, but the weeds will come along with it. The bad stuff will come along with it. The bad character. And so sometimes, for your sake, he says, let's hold off one more year before the proposal happens. I got to deal with that prideful nature of hers. Let me hold off one year before I give him a child because he's still lazy and he does not understand that he carries the priesthood. Hold on before I, I allow her to release her album. I allow him to release his album. Because if not, he will be like the Pharisees and tell us to lay down when he walks by because he has arrived. 
So let me deal with some things. So even in his anger, he still cares for you. He's like, let me hold off. Because she's too emotional. I was reading yesterday that a lady who was highly emotional, she never came off combative. The Lord gave her a good husband. The man was holding his baby. Something small happened, and she ended up shooting the guy with her own baby in his hand. He, she went to jail. She came back out, remarried. And now she has killed her new husband because of emotional issues. And mind you, she was an older lady that got married. And I was thinking like, wow, God, this is why you probably withheld it for her for 40 years. Like, deal with yourself. Deal with yourself. Deal with yourself. Even in his anger, he still loves us. See, when God is scared to release his glory, his anointing, and his reign upon you, that is a problem. Some of you, God is actually scared to make you a voice for the generation. Because if he was to make you the voice, then you would just be unapproachable. If God was to really make your business boom, then we don't know what you would do to your parents. If God was to really get you to that high position, then you would probably beat your husband. God is scared to release his glory on you because you are not broken enough. God cannot give you all that you are praying for because you refuse to humble yourself and pray. And we see this in two characters. When we speak about Esau and Jacob, I want to explain to you something. So Esau and Jacob were just like us. The prideful nature and the humble nature. Now, when you continue reading, you realize that their father was a typology of God because God is the blesser. And their, and their mother, Rebecca, she was a typology of the Holy Spirit. So the Bible says that basically God instructs them to go and bring forth some, some food. So God tells the humble person and the prideful person, I need both of you to go and get me food. Now the humble person who is Esau goes to the Holy Spirit and says, I don't know how to make this food. Like, what am I supposed to do? And the Holy Spirit says, go to the woods. Go get X, Y, and Z. Bring it back and let me help you make the soup. Then you have the prideful person. Just went into the woods by himself. Did his own thing. But when you walk with the Holy Spirit, there is a speed that you carry. And so therefore Esau ended up carrying speed and he was able to come back quicker. Now when you continue reading Genesis 27, 27. Genesis 27, 27. And he came near and kissed him. And he smelt the smell of his clothing. And blessed him and said, Surely... The smell of my son is like the smell of a field which the Lord has blessed. So he went and he kissed him. Esau kissed him. Esau said that, listen, Lord, I know you want to bless us because you told me and the prideful person that you want to bless us. But you want to see how we handle these things. And the Bible says that, and he came near intimacy. He kissed him intimacy. And, he, and then God smelled him. This is why the Bible speaks in the book of Leviticus. It speaks about the high priest making sure that they don't have a flat nose. Because you need a man or a woman of God who can smell you and let you know that where you've been is wrong or where you've been is right. And so the Bible says that he smelled him and said, surely you've been in the right place. You've been in the right place. Continue reading. Verse 28. Therefore, may God give you of the dew of heaven, mm. of the fatness of the earth, mm. and plenty of grain and wine. Humility. Brokenness. 
It will give you the blessings. Continue. Verse 29. Let people serve you. Influence. And nations bow down to you. Influence. Be master over your brethren. Influence. And let your mother's sons bow down to you. Influence. Cursed be everyone who curses you. Authority. And blessed be those who bless you. Power. What brokenness brings. These are the blessings that come when you are broken. Continue reading. Verse 30. Now it happened as soon as Isaac had finished blessing Jacob, and Jacob had scarcely gone out from the presence of Isaac his father, that Esau his brother came in from his hunting. He also had made savory food and brought it to his father and said to his father, let my father arise. You see what I said Esau earlier, I meant Jacob. Jacob was the humble one. Esau was the prideful one. You see what Esau did here? He also had made savory food and brought it to his father. And what did he say? Let my father bless me. Let, you better bless me. I've been in church all these years. I've been serving. Give me a house. Give me a marriage. Bless me. But when you see what Jacob did, Jacob drew near and close. Jacob went and bowed. Jacob had the posture right. Esau, on the other hand, come on, get up and bless me, old man. I deserve this. I'm called for this. Continue. Let my father arise and eat of his son's game, that your soul may bless me. And his father Isaac said to him, who are you? So he said, I am your son. Hey! Your who are you? Who are you? The Bible says that those who think they are, let them not be deceived. So when you think you have arrived, I'm the hottest nurse in town, the hottest uh, tech person in town, I'm the hottest artist, I'm the newest mother. He said, whoa, who are you? Do you forget I am the one who blesses? Do you forget that if you are not contrite, if you are not humble, he said, who are you? And the sad part is now you got to answer the question. I am, oh yeah? Continue. So he said, I am your son, your firstborn, Esau. Then Isaac trembled exceedingly and said, Who? Where is the one who hunted game and brought it to me? I ate all of it before you came, and I have blessed him, and indeed he shall be blessed. When you think you have arrived, when you think you know it all, when you think you are the hottest latest in town, when you think you are the smartest, that is when God begins to question you. And the question and what it looks like is now that you've come with a new job, two weeks later, I lost the job. Who are you? Who are you? He came, he said, get up, bless me. Meanwhile, Jacob, he understood that the only way the blessings can be released is by humility. And so, you know, rain exposes, water exposes. Right now, the cleaning team does a wonderful job. But if there was to be rain leaking from here, if we come back next week, wouldn't it have a stench? And so when rain is, or when water falls on the wrong ground, it brings about a stench. And so again, God cannot bless you because he's like, if I do, the smell will be so bad that you'll become leprous because no one wants to be around you now. You are too prideful. You are too full of yourself. Your, your talkings are too much. And my child, and my husband, and my this. He said, who are you? Am I not the author of the blessings? Am I not the answer to every insult? Who are you? I'm sorry I didn't give you a message that you will be blessed today. That you're going to get a car today. I apologize. 
Leviticus 21, 18. Leviticus 21, 18. For any man who has a defect shall not approach. A man blind or lame, who has a marred face or any limb too long. This is why God needs you to be under and near people who have not a flat nose. He said, make sure this man ha does not have any defect. A man that is not blind or lame. If I see you doing wrong and I cannot tell you or you are manipulative enough for me not to tell you, God ends up dealing with me as well. He said, for any man who has a defect shall not approach a blind man. If I am blind, if I've turned a blind eye, if I'm doing wrong, if I'm not in right standing, he wouldn't allow us to lead this church. So if you ever wonder, I'm telling you, these are ways to know that where you are is a good place. Because even when controversy comes, even when the shade room decides to post us for something wrong, if the Lord continues to raise this church, just know that we are still in right standing. He said, I will not allow a blind man to lead another blind man. So when you go to a church and they know you are doing wrong and they still put you on the mic, it's in your best interest to put the mic down and run. He wants no flat-nosed priests who cannot smell. Genesis 27, 18. Genesis 27, 18. So he went to his father and said, My father. And he said, Here I am. Who are you, my son? You see, you must carry such a heart that you are always never approaching things before the Holy Spirit does. Always inquiring of God, Lord, shall I pursue? Shall I continue with this course? Shall I even start the course? Should I start the relationship? Should I go for this treatment? Should I do this? I apologize. I know you wanted a word that would, would have you standing up and, and screaming. But I thank God that I hear God. Because he said you are missing brokenness. He said your brokenness is more important to him than anything. He said there's so much he wants to do. But you are lacking. You are lacking. You are lacking. <laughs> he made his own food. Esau did his own thing. That's like many of us. God tells you, preach this message. Nope, this is not what's going to get the people to stay or come. And so you preach your own message. He says, sing this song. Nope, this is not the latest song that's in. So you end up singing your own song. God says, I need you to go here and serve. You're like, I don't feel like it. Maybe next week. You do your own thing. You are a typology of Esau. And then you come and you testify. Oh, and the Lord had been telling me for a few months. That you are not ashamed? Are you not ashamed? All this time he's been telling you to do something. You hear the word of God. But you want to Esau your way out and do your own thing. Why wouldn't he be scared to release his glory on you? Say, Lord, Lord. be not afraid to release your reign on me because it's sad God is literally fearful to release his glory if I let her become the doctor if I get her into medical school what this girl will show us she will show us pepper if I let this contract go through this man we will never see him again and so now God has to keep you seated at KFT without a testimony. <laughs> First Kings 18, 1. First Kings chapter 18, verse 1. And it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, saying, Go, present yourself to Ahab, and I will send rain on the earth. 
until Elijah decided to show himself there was not going to be rain. Until you do right, until you get this together, until you get it together, until your prayer life comes together, until you get intimate with Christ, there is a season that will not change for a community because of you. Because of you. Because of you. Until you decide to do what you have to do behind closed doors. KFT might not have a certain testimony that will draw the masses in all because of you. We are waiting to fill up the rest of the seats. But God is saying that this one testimony will blow the minds of everyone across the globe and pack this house out. But you are not willing. But you are not willing. I want to place the emphasis on you. Your healing is just a matter of you being broken. Be broken enough and you're healed. And you'll come testify with the x-ray, with the, 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 the reports, and say that you guys all saw me dying. You physically saw me dying. But here I have come to present to you that I am a vessel that holds rain. I carry testimony. Until you get it together, some of us won't have certain types of testimonies. Until you decide to humble yourself, there are certain things that this ministry can never say because you are withholding it. Because you are withholding it. You know, I know in due time, Brother Elijah will come and share his message. But this is one of our most powerful testimonies here. Brother Elijah is now, Elisha, Elisha. Brother Elisha is now a part of the Father's Society. Now, we too 
KRT, we get to experience the double-breasted God, the one who gives children. Hey! That day we are all wearing white. When the enemy, those doctors decided that it was a no, God said, hold up, I got something. Vessels that hold rain. There's dimensions of God. There are testimonies that we will never be able to say until you are broken. That day that she did the deliverance, she called us. They called us and they said, First Lady, we are ready, whatever. I'm stripping myself. Priscilla, I'm stripping myself. I'm coming fire night. I said, make sure you hold your plate. They held their plate, came, and God did what he had to do. Yes, it might have been embarrassing, but guess what? We are all rejoicing now. Vessels that hold rain. Let me tell you, this testimony, that day, I'm rolling on the floor with them. Because... Do you know why I named Think Pink the birthing? The Lord told me for Priscilla's sake, name it the birthing. Priscilla got pregnant right in the middle of Think Pink. When you calculate the date, it was Think Pink. The theme, the whole theme, it was for one person. vessels that hold rain you withhold us from rejoicing when you don't get it together you don't allow us to celebrate when you don't get it together look at how joyful everyone is all because they decided not to give up and come and see this beautiful baby that they made look at that Just worship God. Jen 
Sister Jen and Nana took seed. Priscilla was still there. Elisha was still there. I said, God, there are certain testimonies KFT will not experience until you release this child. For anyone who has any issues, this, a vessel that holds rain. The rain of revival. This one, it wasn't secret. God did it in the open. To the point that sometimes Priscilla would be annoyed. Like, why you guys keep calling me? And I said, what God wants to use this testimony to do? Elisha, you are blessed. You are blessed. Mommy, you are blessed. You are blessed. They will come tell their story, but me, I'm going to be standing right here with them too. We thank God for your life. He said, I sought for a man to stand in the gap, and I found no one. God is seeking for you. Do you understand that, Jesse, KFT will get the testimony of Platinum Record? Where's David? David, do you understand that until you decide to get it together, we will not have that testimony? Where's Liz? Until you get it together, we, we too will not be a church with Grammy Award winning worship. Where's Alexis? Alexis, until you get it together, we will not have this testimony without you. God is in need of you guys. Until you get it together, there are testimonies that we, we who are crying out to God for, we will never get. I had six kids back to back. I didn't have any issue. So if you come to me barren, I can tell you of other stories. But now I have a tangible story here. I have a tangible proof. I have evidence here. That when you come to KRT, there is evidence. The fruit is there. There's dimensions of God that we cannot see until you get it together. The first one to become a doctor in your house. Eva, until you get it together. seated quickly and I'll quickly finish for you to be a vessel that can hold rain there are certain things that makes God scared do you know that there are certain things that make God scared to release his glory on you and I want to make you aware so that when you begin to do it, the Holy Spirit will check you immediately. The things that cause God to be scared to release his glory. Number one, anger. Cain was angry. Cain was an angry man. Anger is an exaggerated importance. The only reason why I can get angry at you passing me by is because I think I'm too important. And so it, it evokes an emotion inside of me and I become angry. So anger, the baby is pride. When you are prideful, you get angry. And when you are an angry person, God can never release testimonies to you. God is scared of angry people and his blessings. And so even if the enemy comes and gives you a testimony here and there, God can never really do what he wants to do because you are angry. Anger causes God to be scared to release blessings upon you. Pride. 
pride. Genesis 49, 6 to 7. Genesis 49, 6 to 7. 6 to 7. 6 to 7. Let not my soul enter their council. Let not my honor be united to their assembly. For in their anger they slew a man, and in their self-will they hamstrung an ox. Cursed be their anger, for it is fierce, and their wrath, for it is cruel. I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. See, Jacob was saying to Simeon and Levi, hey, let God fight for you. But they were so angry that they began to fight for themselves. See, God wanted to perform a victorious end for them, but anger. And so every time you are an angry person, God is scared. How can you make God scared? God is scared to release his blessings on you. These were people he was saying, hold your peace. God got you. But look what anger did. And he said, cursed be to their anger, for it is fierce, and their wrath, for it is cruel. He said, I will divide them in Jacob, and I will scatter them. So not only is God scared to rain his blessings on those who are angry people, he begins to divide you. You see that your home becomes divided. You see your business divides, your children divide. All the glory and the blessings that were coming to you now is scattered all over the place. May the Lord deliver you from anger. 1 Samuel 17, 28 to 30. 1 Samuel 17, 28. Now Eliab, his oldest brother, heard when he spoke to the men. And Eliab's anger was aroused against David. And he said, why did you come down here? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your pride and the insolence of your heart, for you have come down to see the battle. And David said, what have I done now? Is there not a cause? Then he turned from him toward another and said the same thing. And these people answered him as the first ones did. Here you have this story, and you see that the wrath of God comes upon those who are very self-centered. God is scared of self-centered people. Eliab, you, you wouldn't sacrifice yourself, but your little brother has come. And now you are upset because he wants to do the job that you would not do. He wants to give Israel the testimony that you are trying to withhold from them. And so someone like Eliab, he is one of those people, if it's not me, or you cannot do better than me. And I pray for every older sibling here. I want to address this very quickly. All the older siblings... Your little sisters are getting married. I want to tell you today that what you have done for them is more than you know. You have broken down doors for them. And so anyone who tries to mock you, may their mocking of the Lord be upon them. May the mockings of God be upon them. Because had it not been Manny, if you were not here, Maritha would not be here. Mary, if you were not here, Gladys and Mike would not be here. Amma, if you were not here, Raquel would not be here. I'm telling everyone today, their testimonies, when it loads, just like this. So woe unto anyone who decides to mock them. Do you know what it means to open the door for someone? When my husband is ahead of me and he opens the door, he now becomes behind me because I enter first. Their siblings have entered first, but they held the door open. They held the door open. And when their testimony loads, we will all wear white again. And to the glory of God, we will celebrate. Amma, be at peace. 
for the Lord is with you the Lord is with you the man that is coming your way ten times speed 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 Mary I prophesy speed to you speed speed Mary I prophesy speed speed the siblings will serve you KFT we will serve you guys for what you have done for them because of you three we now have marriage testimonies here may the Lord honor you three may the Lord do it for you quickly and we will we will buy our white garments ahead of time God will do it don't let anyone mock you when they ask you say when my time comes you will hear of me So God is, you see, they were not Eliabs. Eliabs are older siblings who mock little siblings for trying to arise. In fact, they were the, the, the ones who pushed their little siblings. Hey, come to church. Let's break these altars. Let's do this. They were not Eliabs. And so when God is ready to release the glory, you will see. You will see what will happen. But God is scared to release it on the Eliabs. Those who never want anyone to go past them. I always say we are a young couple. We are just getting started. But a time has to come where we, we too, we have a bunch of uh, bishop elects and a bunch of prophetesses that are going worldwide preaching and they come back on Sundays just to come and listen to the word. You must stand on the shoulders of giants. Whoever is called into ministry in this house, when you start, you cannot start just in a classroom. Your classroom experience cannot be just a, 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 a year. It must be swift. Ministry in this house, you still must go through the process, but it will not be as egregious as we went through. When you are an Eliab, no one can do better than you. Just think of the person who, who, who sent um, Bishop Jakes to Christ. We don't know him. Just think of how great of a man he is, rather. Even more than Bishop Jakes himself. But when you carry this syndrome, God is like, I'm scared. Because she does not want anyone to pass her. She doesn't want anyone, he doesn't want anyone to pass him. But when you are a celebrator, when you are a person who genuinely likes to celebrate people, God will always pour down his rain. He will always pour down his rain upon people. God is scared to pour out his blessings on those who hide his testimony. On those who hide his testimony. See, the alabaster box was expensive. They could have essentially robbed the woman because that means you have a lot of money. But she said that I'm not going to withhold this testimony. I'm going to pour it at the feet of Jesus. And this woman here decided to do so. But had she withheld it, now we would not be speaking about her. The Bible says that well, for what you have done, for years and centuries to come, we will speak of you. Till this day, we are still speaking about a woman who broke a box. When you are a person that withholds your testimonies, when you always want to wait for the opportune time, you slap God in the face and you become ungrateful. Moving forward, let the testimony load but make sure you glorify God with it. Make sure you glorify God. Because then he sees that I've taken you to step one. You didn't give me thanks. How can I take you to step two? So he is scared of people that withhold his testimony. Today, Hosea 3, Hosea 3.10. Hosea 3.10.
10. Nine. Is it? There's no nine? Okay, read this and let's see. Then the Lord said to me, go again. Love a woman who is loved by a lover and is committing adultery, just like the love of the Lord for the children of Israel, who look to the other gods and love the raisin cakes of the pagans. Verse 2. So I bought her for myself for 15 shekels of silver and one and one half homers of barley. And I said to her, you shall stay with me many days. You shall not play the harlot, nor shall you have a man. So too will I be toward you. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without king or prince, without sacrifice or sacred pillar, without ephod or teraphim. Afterward, the children of Israel shall return and seek the Lord their God and David their king. They shall fear the Lord and his goodness in the latter days. They shall fear the goodness of the Lord in the what? Latter days. And so if you are an ungrateful person, God is scared to release. You see, with my husband, I'm telling you, sometimes he spoils me. But the reason why he does that is because every little thing he does is thank you. I've learned that the password is thank you. The password for God is thank you. The password for marriage is thank you. The password for relationships is thank you. If you become ungrateful, God can never see you to the next level. He is scared to rain on people who don't tremble at every move. You must become a person who is just so just, you are just a grateful bubble. Everything you do, you are just full of gratefulness. You are eager. You are saying that, Lord, today, make me a vessel that can hold your reign. I want us to be on our feet. I want us to begin just by thanking God. I always say not, not everyone gets to hear these type of messages. And so when God allows you to be here or tune in and you hear it, you should just personally be thanking God like, thank you God for getting me together before the enemy got to me. Just want you to open your mouth and begin to pray. Just thank God. Just thank him. Sincerely thank him. Sincerely thank him for the word that has come to divide. A word that comes to prove. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Rapatana Nama Sake, Rekadesh Kebeka de la Prisca Talabaha, Rapatos Papasadana, Rapatos Papasadia, Rapatana Papasadana, Rekadesh Kebeka de la Prisca Rapatana Papadana Papada, Rapatos Papa, Rikadina Papasatua, Rikadana Papasadana, Rapatana Rapatana, Rekadana Prisca Rapa, 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 Rapa,
Embargo, every embargo of sin, of sin that hinders me, that hinders me from my next level, from my next level that hinders me, that hinders me from entering the secret place. From entering the secret place today, today, as I pray, as I pray, let your mighty, let your mighty rushing wind, rushing wind, search through me, search through me, search through me, search through as me, as I begin to pray, as I begin to pray, let your wind, let your wind blow through me, blow through me, blow through me, blow through me, blow through. Blow through me, blow through me, blow through me. Come on, pray. Your spirit that is searched through my life this moment, every embargo of sin, of iniquity that hinders the free flow of God in my life, that will not allow me to testify, to be a testimony.
unleash with fear and trembling. Come on, don't be a martha. Get on your knees and cry out. That which has hindered me from being the testimony that needs to be seen and heard. Fire! 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 Fire!
In the name of Jesus. Say every agent of delay that has been sent to frustrate me in the revival that God wants to use me for. Today, I send the fire. The fire. The fire. The fire. The fire. The fire of God. Come on, pray. What God is about to use you to do. He's about to draw you in such a way that women, women who used to know Christ, they will now come seeking God because of the God in you. Where's Prince? Prince, the army people, you are not done with them yet. He said, I'm using you as a revivalist. When they look for an army man who knows the word of God, he said, I'm using my son. Yeah. Where's Israel? The film industry. It's not just about you. The revival is about to start. Come on. The revival is about to start. He said he's going to use you. Hollywood will know Jesus. Hollywood will know Jesus. Hollywood will know Jesus. Hollywood will know Jesus. Listen, you are praying that God, you must use me in whatever capacity. Yes, Lord. In whatever capacity it is. Yes, Lord. At this point, wherever, whatever, just use me. Yes, Lord. Some of you, 
He will literally use you as HR representatives. He will begin to use you. He will literally put his spirit in you. Jesus. In meetings. You are a revivalist. The Lord told me to tell you. Yes, Lord. He said, everyone here is marked for revival. Yes, Lord. Every single person here. Yes, Lord. He said he is using you in your niche. Yes, yes Lord. Lord. The desire must be there. Yes, Lord. You, because of you, the worldly people will come to KFT. Yes! Because of the change that God is doing in your life, they will see you and draw here. Yes, Lord. Mama Denise, the hood will know Jesus because of you. Jesus. The hood will know Jesus. Yes, Lord. God is giving you an anointing for young men. Oh, yes, Lord. Young men, yes, when Lord. you speak to them, their hearts will be so broken. Jesus. And you will bring them to the saving knowledge of Christ. Jesus. Listen, say, my father, my maker. My father, my maker. Today, today, as I open my mouth I wide, my mouth fill it. Jesus. Jesus our last prayer but praying that God there are dimensions of you that KFT and the world that we are in now need to experience yes. see the world was in need of some young fiery woman and the Lord said I got you today the Lord said that there are some dimensions of myself that I want to reveal Jesus and I can only use the willing vessels yes, Noel, the gangbangers, the gangbangers, the, the real gangbangers, you'll have them lined up here. First row. Today, an earnest plea of mercy. One prayer that I pray, Lord, don't let me attach myself to this man just for the sake of marriage. My marriage must cause revival. My children must cause revival. Yes, Lord. Whatever church you plant me in must cause revival. Yes, Lord. Today you're praying that, Lord, whatever dimension you want to show Jesus. this generation, yes, Lord. use me as your testimony. Yes, Lord. Use me as your vessel. Yes, Lord. Use, me. Use, me. use me. Use me. Use me. If we are in need of some crazy healings and you are sick, God, use me. Use yes, me as the prototype. Yes, Lord. Use me as the reference point. Yes, Lord. If
if your children are bad, you say, God, use me to turn mother's hearts back to you because my children are bad as hell. But when I came into the saving knowledge of Christ, Jesus. each one of them were arrested. God. Now I birthed out pastors, prophets, evangelists. Yes, Lord, use me in that dimension. Yes. There's dimensions of Christ we are yet to see. That's why he has so many names. El Roy, El Nisi, El Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah El Gibor. There's many names. He's waiting to birth out the different names. He's just waiting for a vessel. Say, my father. My father. You who made me. You who made me. Today. Today. I avail myself. I avail myself. To be used. To be used. For the revival. For the revival. Use me. Use me. As a testimony. As a testimony. Use me. Use me. To show your dimensions. To show your dimensions. Today. Today. As I pray. As I pray. Let your spirit. Let your spirit. Impart in me. Be impart in me. For a revival. For a revival. Come on, pray. He said, open your mouth wide. Oh, Jesus. See, you don't understand the prayer point. There are some things we can never say until it happens to you. Sister Nana is a fine, slim thing. If it were not for her, I would not know the testimony of someone as slim as her. She pushed out 11 pounds. That's a dimension I don't even know about. So now when someone comes and they say, I can't push, I refer them to a reference, a tangible reference point. A tangible reference point. You see, I don't want your mind to wander too far. Say, Lord, whatever my situation is, make the outcome become so glorious yes, Lord. that a new dimension will be birthed. Yes, Lord. Sister Rosemary, she comes from a place where they hinder pregnancies. Literally, the minute she entered into her pregnancy, the next month she was pregnant. There are people in her house that have been hindered for years, been married for years, and did not give birth. So now when people come to me and they say that my family, they don't give birth and there's people, I refer them to a tangible, tangible, tangible testimony. Today you're saying that, Lord, make me evidence. Yes, Lord. Make me evidence. That's yes, your Lord. prayer. Say, Lord, Lord, make me evidence. Make me evidence. As I pray. As I pray. Impart your spirit. I pray. Make me evidence, oh God. Make me tangible evidence. Yeah, 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 yeah
Jesus. Oh, Jesus. God has to make you an evidence. When people come, I'm a, I'm a mom of one. I don't know who will marry me. Where's Sophia? My tangible evidence. When people come, my mom is in, on the deathbed. Where's Mama Beatrice? Tangible evidence. Today you must pray. Don't take every prayer as just prayer. These things work. We are under open heavens. The clouds are full. And it's ready to release rain. Yes, Lord. You, you are saying, God, make me an evidence. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Whichever way it is. When people come to me and say, I don't know if my whole family can be saved. I say, where's Amma and Mary? Tangible evidence. Make me a vessel that can hold rain. Tangible. When someone comes. My children, they're young adults. I don't know if they will ever serve God. Where's Mama Suzanne? Tangible evidence. When people come, I'm a young mom, I'm single, and I have a daughter, and I don't know if she'll end up uh, walking in the same precepts as me. And then I see Milan praying. Where is faith? Tangible, tangible. Yes, Lord. May we refer to you. Yes, Lord. May you be a reference point. Yes, Lord. For God's glory. Yes, Lord. Your last prayer. Lord, make me, you know the billboards that we see when we're driving? Lord, let my story become one of those. Yes, Lord. As everyone who is walking by, driving by, all they see is, that's, that's the young man. Yes, Lord. That went from grass to grace. Jesus. This is the story of someone who had no home. Now he has built a whole development of homes. Jesus. Make my story tangible, Lord. Yes, Lord. My father, my maker. My father, my maker. Today under today. open heavens. Today under open heavens. Make my story. Make my story. Tangible. Tangible. Evidence. Evidence. Of your goodness. Of your goodness. As I pray. As I pray. Make me a vessel. Make me a vessel. That can hold the rain. 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 Hold the rain. Pray. Pray. Receive the rain of revival. Today I ignite the fire of revival in you. That even as you walk about the streets, you are praying, you are worshiping, you are crying out, and God is using you in a special way. 
I baptize your tongue to speak the oracles of Christ. To sing the oracles of Christ. To preach the oracles of Christ. To teach the oracles of Christ. Receive an impartation. For revivalist reign is here, say of the Lord. Marriages that cause revivals. Families that cause revivals. Men and women that cause revivals. Teachers that cause revivals. Doctors that cause revivals. Worshippers that cause revival. Instrumentalists that cause revivals. Oh, financer that cause revivals. Holy Ghost, have your way. Blow in this place. Blow in this place. Hands lifted. Just receive a touch of God. Receive a touch in His own special way. Worshippers, touch your teachers, touch your sisters, touch your daughters, touch your fathers, touch your mothers, touch us all, touch us all, touch us all. Confession, Holy Ghost, you and I will change the world. grateful we are grateful Abba Father that you have answered our prayers we thank you oh God that you have ignited the fire of revival inside of us we thank you Abba Father that our desires have changed that now we desire to be testimonies for the kingdom not for our namesake but for your namesake we thank you O oh Lord for inclining your ears to hear us we ask oh God that we become evidence when this generation is looking for evidence may they find our story may they find our testimony may they find our family may they find our marriages may they find our businesses may they find our degrees may they see it as tangible proof that God is with us. May the many dimensions that are yet to be birthed out 
be birthed out through us as vessels. Father God, today, every hand lifted, we are availing ourselves to be used. We are saying that we are available. You have tilled the ground, released the rain. We will bring forth good fruit. Today, we ask for your mercy. We ask for your mercy. Much like Solomon, we don't know our left from our right. All we know is that we desire to be used. Today, we confess our ignorance as sons and daughters. We confess our ignorance as leaders. We confess our ignorance as parents. We confess our ignorance as husbands and wives. We confess our ignorance as church members. We don't know how we will do it lest you help us. Today, as our hands are lifted, we are declaring to you, we are available and ready for use. We are available and ready for use in the smallest scale to the biggest scale. We are available for use. We thank you, Abba Father, for your visitation. In Jesus' name we pray. And we all shout a big amen. If you would like to sow into it as the choir gives us a song and our, our MC comes, please make sure you go into covenant. Come and touch the altar that you too shall be evidence in the name of Jesus. Amen. Holy Ghost, you are now. 